Hey, Threadheads, this week we're going on a field trip. We're going to take you to several different ministries that are really connected. Come on. All right, team, first stop, Kindred Hospital. And we're gonna introduce you to a guy whose job is as an x-ray tech, but he's doing so much more with his gift of painting. I've been painting all my life, but I really didn't really get deep into it until I got probably in middle school. Then all of a sudden I would get into these art contests and then I'd win them all and then I was thinking, boy, this is fun. It's kind of a thing that I've been doing basically for my family. I would do paintings and then they would take most of them, so, 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 so I guess I, they like more than I did. But my dad was an artist too. He was an artist and a musician. So you come by it naturally? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I was going to school for art. I was in the sophomore at SIU Edwardsville and my mom came home and she told me to get out of that and get into the medical field. I said, why? She said, because people are always going to be sick. They might not like art every day. How did that make you feel? Well, I listened to her and she, she never steered me wrong. So you got out of the art, mm -hmm. and how was that transition? Well, I found a way to make them both work. What I do is I paint for the patients here. I've never owned a painting in my whole life, so it means a lot to me. I didn't know him that well other than him taking a few x-rays of me, and it was just beautiful. It just, beautiful, I don't know how else to say. Sometimes they don't get visitors, you know, they're sitting there and they're staring at the same wall because they're in the same bed, staring at the same wall, so I thought I'd bring some joy into it. How does it make you feel when you look at it? I feel like somebody, somebody likes me in this world. What it is, it's a symbol of hope and a symbol of healing. Oh, it meant everything in the world. It brightened up the room with some color. And I just love that painting. I understand you got a letter from uh, a, a patient's son who you had done a painting for. I don't, I don't know if the son really had a, a tight relationship with his dad and kind of brought him closer, you know, in his last days. It was, kind of, it was kind of a sad letter. My father was a patient at Kindred Hospital. He's been dealing with health issues for the past 12 years. The last several weeks have been especially hard on him and he passed away on Friday. The day before, your patient representative brought one of your paintings to hang in the hospital room. It is beautiful. And I'm taking it home and hanging it somewhere so that I can have a daily reminder of my father. I just wanted to send you a quick note to tell you how much it meant to receive that piece of artwork at such a difficult time for our family. I can't accurately put into words how grateful I am for what you do. Thank you. It's just amazing. Knowing that it's just not for the patient, it's the families too. We'd love to have the mindset of people that the servant leadership goes beyond the four walls of our organization. And that's exactly what Fred does. Who gets more out of the process, the one receiving the painting or you giving it? Oh, I do, of course. Makes me feel good, makes me feel like I've done something for somebody. I mean, because if I, if I come in, just do my job and go home, then I feel like I left something here, you know? So it's, 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 a, good, it's a good thing. That Fred Waters, is he the real deal or what? Just serving right where he is as an x-ray tech at Kindred. I love that. Hey, we're at the St. Patrick's Center where we're gonna share a little Fred Waters love with them as well as learn about a ministry they have that is seriously grassroots. Hey, Kelly. Tim Ezel, how, how are you? Are you? Good I'm to good. see you. I'm great, I got something what for you. What are you bringing here? So Fred Waters, he's an x-ray tech at Kindred and he paints paintings for the patients there, and I brought one to y'all. I love it. We will find a place for it right here at St. Patrick's Center. There you go. It's and a we place. have a story for you about our casserole program. Are you ready? I can't wait. Let's go. Let's make some casserole. Let's grab the elevator. I am from St. Louis Basilica Cathedral, and the dishes we cooked this morning was a ham and rice dish. I'm Kathy Tacklett from St. Clair Assisi in Ellisville, and we make a mastacholi dish. So the casserole program began when our founder, Edith Cunane, started the center and knew that the people that we work with 
needed to have a hot meal during the day. So she went on and recruited at different parishes or organizations around St. Louis and found people who were willing to make a casserole once a month for us uh, and bring it down. And so we, we receive those from our volunteers, we freeze them, and then we serve them to our clients seven days a week, 365 days a year. Being part of this ministry, once a month is my favorite day of the month. We have 30 volunteers and they are so committed, they love it. My mother got involved in this ministry back in 1984. St. Patrick's Center put out a, a, an all call for people who would be willing to make casseroles. She's been doing this for a full 35 years. We show up on our parking lot at St. Clair Vecisi. People bring their casseroles to our car. I drive down here, we drive down here. St. Patrick's Center sends James out with a big barrel, a big, a big cart unloads our car, it's just that easy. I got involved with the casseroles by seeing my mom make them each week. And I would help, when I was younger, I would help with the little things like crushing up the cereal for the top. It's really nice to know that I can do something at such a young age to help so many people. I want someone to get sausage in every bite. <laughs> it's very special, you know, I've never seen the women eat it are been in this building before but I know that I'm helping in a small way so it's very special. I think it's classic textbook vision of people coming together to meet a need. If we can fill their stomachs I think it's a good first step for them to take another step to improve their life. It, it fills me up and it makes me feel better and I can have the energy to do what I need to do. You know, if I, if I don't eat for a few days, I can't do anything. We serve over 100,000 meals a year, and we don't buy any food. We have so many people in this community supporting us that our clients will never go hungry. The beauty of our community meals program is if you can throw some food together in a, in a you know, tin and bring it down, you've got something to offer. If you can come down to St. Patrick's Center for 45 minutes one day a month, and scoop out some food on a plate and provide it to somebody, you've got something to offer. If you can fill a water cup for somebody, you've got something to offer. And that personal engagement and that understanding of that human relationship is what makes this work so critically important. Everybody has something to give, really, no matter how small. Is that an awesome ministry or what? And get this, over 35 years, more than five and a half million meals have been served out of the St. Patrick Center. That's pretty cool, huh? Hey, we're not done yet. We got more connections coming your way on the thread. Keep it right here. Our first mission is to bring glory to God. That's why we're here. We have a talent, it just happens to be banking. So M1 Bank is banking on a mission um, fueled by the power of purpose. It gets a point in your life where you gotta live it every day, not just believe it. I'm believing that this is going to catch on and, and we're all going to thread up. For us in our house, this is how we're going to serve the Lord and, and His purpose. And we're going to do it through the financial institution that happens to be called in one bank. Hey friends, let's be honest. Nobody knows what the future holds, but we all know what we want our future to look like. Lower taxes, guaranteed income, financial stability. Sound pretty good? Now, all you have to do is call an attorney, an insurance agent, a money manager, and a tax advisor. Or you can call the one place that has it all under one roof. Our friends at Circle of Advisors secure us. In 20 years, not a single client has lost even a dime due to market volatility. They've walked with the thread since day one to help secure our future, and they'll do the same for you too. What? Our time's almost up together already? Oh, you mean I gotta wait till next Saturday? That's way too long. We gotta catch up during the week. I got a great idea. Hey, why don't you follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You know, we've got content that doesn't actually fit on our 30 minute show, right? And we're adding new messages all the time. So follow us, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. It's our way to keep up with you throughout the week. And we can thread up all week long. Follow us, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. See you soon. Hey, Threadheads, you no doubt know Don Brown. Don Brown Chevrolet. Don Brown Chevrolet. Don Brown Chevrolet. And you probably know that Don has a flair for fashion and a knack for cars, but he also has a heart for people. I learned from my father a long time ago, it's not about one person, it's about the entire community. It is a car business, but it's a people business. It's about the people. It's not about the products, it's about the people. If you're in the market for a car, come to Don Brown, where it's people over process. And we're proud to be part of the Thread family, and we'd love to be part of your family.
Man, I am still thinking about that ministry at St. Patrick's Center, the casserole ministry. I mean, you talk about grassroots, just a bunch of organizations and churches getting together to move to the need of the hungry in St. Louis. And all they have to do is commit to once a month making some casserole. I love that idea. Hey, we got another one for you in Troy, Illinois. It's called Bags to Mats. What do you see what they're doing? One of the ladies at church saw it on uh, Facebook. A group of ladies in um, Kentucky, I think, were making mats for the homeless. And she said, I think we can do that. It's become more than just that we're making bags for the homeless. We're sharing stories with each other about our lives and about community. You don't know who you're going to meet every week. It's just, just fun. Saw it online on Facebook. They had an advertisement with their church. I seen the big looms and I thought, I can do that. Sometimes in college students, we don't get like many chances to like give back to the community, but like this is a way we can give back. Being from downtown St. Louis, like I've seen a lot of, you know, people without homes and they don't even have anything to sleep on. So I feel like this is at least the bare minimum. It's something we can do. And I feel like all you can do is all you can do. And this is a big, it's a big step. Knowing that people are out there without places to sleep, and just doing this little thing is like gonna give them so much joy and so much warmth and the inside it makes us feel good. All right, Jill, you got quite the operation going on here. You think I can do it? Anyone can do it. All here right. you go. Here's your uniform. I'm gonna suit up, show up, and thread up. Uh, See what I did there? <laughs> <laughs> what we do is make mats out of plastic bags from Walmart, Target, any grocery store. We flatten them first, we cut them, cut the top off, cut the bottom off, and then we loop them together into chains of fives to be able to um, put it on the loom itself. And then we have chains of tens that we actually weave. Wait. Oh, yeah, Dad, mess that up. Yep. Are you surprised? No. 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 I, I didn't think so. We know where they go. We know the people that take them. But we don't see those. We don't see those people. We hear back from the people who take them, though, that oh gosh, when those mats come in, how exciting it is. You know, they don't fight over them, but they're like, oh yeah, I want one. I want one. You definitely will have to try to lay on one because you will be amazed how soft and comfortable they are. Is this where you take your breaks right here? No breaks. I gotta get back. Yes. I just wanted to try it before I made it. Sure. I want to know what I'm aiming for. Sure. Okay. All right, Kaylee. From start to finish, one mat maybe would take eight hours. Wow. Yes. Seven to eight hundred bags per mat. <laughs> All the way. Yeah. Okay. So. And uh, stop. Every single Tuesday night, we do not make one mat unless we have a lot of help. We don't even think about that truthfully because we're having a good time visiting and sharing stories and sharing our faith and we don't, we don't even think about that, it, it, that we didn't get one done. I know people will say, well, how many you got done? Well, I don't know, we don't keep track of that. We don't, that's not important. I've had a good teacher, but it, it is harder than it looks. Either I just make it harder. I feel like this is our calling. This is what we can do. It's simple, it doesn't cost anything. It's just sharing a blessing. That's what we're here for, to serve one another. There's always a way, and sometimes we overcomplicate things by thinking we gotta do something so big when the small things can matter the most to anybody. There we go, ready to go. All right, let's make another one. <laughs> hey, I almost forgot, look. The way y'all are serving folks through your ministry here, I wanted to give y'all something from another ministry called Fishes and Loaves at St. Patrick's Center. For 35 years, they've had different churches and organizations preparing meals. Uh, they make casseroles, freeze them, and that's how they serve people at the St. Patrick's Center to make sure the homeless don't go hungry. So Thank you. here's one for you, a Thank casserole. You. Yay. And I may have made it. <laughs> <laughs> but don't let that stop you from eating it. I may not have. What an awesome ministry. And what a picture of the kingdom. I mean, we had old, young, retired, moms, grandmas, college students, all coming together to serve. And they weren't about the speed of it. They weren't about the numbers. It was just about the ministry, helping other people in any way they can. I love that. Oh, that reminds me. I've got some questions. I hope they've got some answers. Hey, gang.
gang, it's time for the hot seat right here on the thread. And we've got Jill in the hot seat. Are you ready to play, Jill? I'm ready. All right. Yeah. All right, here's the deal. Several questions. We're going to put 30 seconds on the clock. The topic is bags or mats. So every answer will have either bag or mat in the answer, all right? You ready? Ready. All right, here we go. Clock will start after I ask the first question. First one. The bases in baseball are often referred to as these. Bags. Bags. Bags, absolutely right. <laughs> Many people have one of these on their porch in front of the front door. Yeah. Mat, absolutely. Yeah. Another name for the game called cornhole is this. Bags. Bags. Bags, absolutely right. This St. Louis Cardinal made a name for himself in the world of salsa. Mat. Mat. Carpenter, that's right, absolutely. This is a term you use when you want to get rid of something or just give up on an idea. You say, oh, let's just bag, bag it. it, yeah. And Bethel Baptist Church started something. They're turning grocery bags into bags. Yeah. Hey, guess what? You just conquered the hot seat right here on the thread. Let's get some of that salsa. Hey, Threadheads, we're excited about a new tool we have that makes it even easier for you to support the mission of the thread. Go to our website, thethreadstl.com, and on that main page, just hit the donate button, and it'll take you to the next screen, which gives you several options. You've got 1334 at the top, also 25, 50, or 100 dollars. Whoa, Tim, back that trailer up. What'd you say, 1334? What's that all about? Well, that's a reminder of the verse that drives the mission of the thread. John 1334. As I have loved you, love one another. Those are Jesus' words, and it's a great reminder of what drives the mission of the thread. So you can click on that, or you have those other options, or if there's another gift on your heart, you can customize your own amount. And then at the bottom of the page, you can make it either a one-time gift or a monthly. We'll click that, hit next, and it takes you to the screen where you can fill out your information, and then there's just one more step. You put in your credit card information, and just like that, you've helped us thread up, y'all. Join the team. We're waiting on you. Hey, Tim, are you ready to meet this week's USA Mortgage Changemaker? You know I am. Come on. Okay, Michelle, tell me how you're changing your community. So I'm on the board of directors for the Franklin County Area United Way. We support 53 different agencies and over 73,000 people in our community. How did you get involved with the United Way? I attended a Power of the Purse, a fundraiser that um, one of our committees puts on. It piqued my curiosity because I've always been involved, and this is a way to impact 53 different agencies with one. We get to visit um, the agencies because we can read all day long, but you get to hear firsthand what they're doing to impact the community, find out more in depth. How does it make you feel to, to know that you're a part of something bigger? Well, it makes me feel good that I'm helping build a stronger and better community for my family and everyone within our area. Wow, Kelly, another great story. Absolutely. There'll be another one next episode. Until then, you find your unique way to become a change maker. What a great ministry. I mean, just a meaningful, practical way of serving the homeless in our community. And I know just the person to give them to. We're going to go see my friend Crystal, who has a ministry that knows just how to get these into the hands of the people who need them most. Hey, Crystal. Hi, Tim. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> you. It's good I to got see you. For you. <laughs> well, praise God. Matt. Thank you. <laughs> Bags to Matt. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Hey, you got it. <laughs> Jesus in Disguise Ministries is it's a homeless outreach ministry. Um, we do a number of things. Um, it's kind of hard to explain a little bit without telling you about me first. So I became homeless at the age of 12. Um, I grew up in an abusive family and at the age of 24, I had an encounter where I gave my life to Christ Jesus. And I managed to leave prostitution at that time. And for three years, I lived a pretty righteous life. Um, but I didn't have very good emotional tools. And within three years, I experienced the loss of my son, the suicide of my mate and the suicide of my sister and brother. I lost my faith in God for a time and I just moved under a bridge and I became completely homeless. So I got addicted to heroin and I could remember those three years after I'd given my life to Christ and I would wake up first thing in the morning and I would pray. And after becoming addicted to heroin, I would wake up first thing in the morning and I needed my fix. So I was in the bushes one day and I was shooting up dope and it was dark, it was at night and I had a very dull needle and I just kept jabbing it in my arm over and over again and crying. 
and I started crying out to God saying, help me. And I think originally I meant for him to like help me get the needle in my arm and get the drugs, but it took so many hours that at some point the cry changed and it became, God, help me. From that point, I wanted to leave addiction, but I just started getting on my knees twice a day and asking God to send me to jail where I couldn't get to drugs anymore and I could be free from the bondage that I was in. And I was eventually picked up for begging for half a gallon of gas. <laughs> And I did four months, but when I came out, I was no longer in slavery to addiction and I was free to worship God. And as I prayed every day, I would see the faces of the people I had known in homelessness and it really bothered me. And rather than leave the streets, I wanted to go back with the gospel. And so that's what I did. Father God, I thank you for the life of my brother. Father God, I thank you for the opportunity to meet him and I thank you for the opportunity to serve him, Father. I ask you, Father, to keep his belly full, Father, to give him shelter, Father, to see him all the way home to heaven and keep him safe on his journey, Father. I literally just began sitting down in the middle of their shooting galleries, only instead of shooting up, I was telling them about what Jesus Christ had done for me. So then I started raising money to send them to rehab. And through this, Jesus in Disguise Ministries was born. Um, I named it based on the words of Mother Teresa. Um, she was talking about the poor in Calcutta. And she said that every time she saw one, she saw Jesus in his most distressing disguise. We come out every Tuesday and we feed and clothe. This is our uh, little shop here. So we've got sweaters and coats over here. This is men's pants. These are what shoes we have. And then we keep a little library because they like to read. We do hygiene and underclothes here. We give them a slip with places they can call for rehab. Um, we offer to transport them. Sometimes we give them cellular phones and we pray with them. I've followed several of them now to the grave, uh, numerous ones to incarceration, and we try and meet their needs to show them the love of Christ any way possible. So some days that might be buying formula for a baby. Some days that might be a pack of Newports. Some days it's a trip to rehab. I never really know what we're going to get because I'm just trying to reach the people that I slept next to on concrete for so long. For me, I see Jesus in each one of them, and I see me. If I hadn't got down and prayed, and God, for whatever reason, hadn't chosen to deliver me, that's where I would still be today. And I guess that's the most important thing that Jesus in Disguise Ministries does, is we shine a light. We just walk around and shine a light. And uh, I'm thankful for that. Oh, I love that ministry. Love Crystal and love the name Jesus in Disguise. I mean, you think about it, it's a perfect name. It's one we should all emulate. We should all be Jesus in disguise to the next person that we cross their path, loving people as he's loved us. John 13, 34, Jesus says, as I have loved you, love one another. We're supposed to love people with the love that we've received. Remember in Matthew 25, when Jesus is separating the sheep from the goats and he has the sheep on his right side, his people, and he says, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was a stranger, you welcomed me. When I was sick, you visited me. When I was in prison, you came to me. And they're like, Jesus, we don't remember ever doing that for you. And he says, whenever you did this for the least of these, you did it for me. Jesus is in disguise with all the people we meet each and every day, and we're supposed to love him the way he's loved us. And Father Flanagan in Nebraska in 1918 started a boys' home called Boys Town. And he was in the home one evening, and there was Reuben Granger carrying Howard Loomis on his back as they ran through the halls. And he looked at him, he said, man, Reuben, you sure you need to be doing that? I mean, having, having Howard on your back, it's kind of a, a high, high risk. And he says, oh, Father, he ain't heavy. He's my brother. Pretty good motto for all of us, right? I mean, if we would look at other people as our brothers and sisters instead of strangers and moving to their needs and loving them the way we've been loved, boy, it'd make a huge difference, right? I mean, that's, look at the casserole ministry at St. Patrick's Center. I mean, it looks like they're just a bunch of folks getting together making some food, but it's more than that. Yes, it's feeding a meal, but that meal brings them to the table where they're able to have bigger and deeper conversations with them about getting them the health care they need, helping them find jobs. How about bags to mats? 800 bags for one mat, it takes eight hours to do it, but they're not worried about numbers, they're not worried about how often they make a fi and finish one. It's about the ministry, it's about just doing the next thing and the ministry that's created in the fellowship with them getting together and moving to the needs of the homeless in their area. They're not worried about a quota, they're worried about fellowship and moving to the needs. 
Fred Waters, and he's just moving to the need of the next person he meets as an x-ray tech. And then he finds out what's important to them and he puts it in a painting and gives them something special, something to give them hope when they're in that hospital trying to heal. It's about loving the next person who crosses our path. Whatever that path is, that's what we're called to do because we've been loved in an amazing way. Our Heavenly Father, He didn't see us as heavy. He sees us as His sons and daughters and sent His Son to die for us so that we could have everlasting life with Him, to pay the price for our sins so that He could bestow the glory on us that He deserved. That's what we're called to do, to just love the next person who crosses our path, to look at them and say, they ain't heavy. That's my brother. That's my sister. And I'm going to love them the way I've been loved. Well, that brings us to the end, but not the end. You know what I'm talking about. What a great ministry. I mean, just a practical, meaningful, oh, that you. Our first stop, we're taking you to the Kindred Hot. We're going to take you around the city. Well, not around the city. What do you see what they're doing? <laughs> Spot Media Production Group.